removal must be enforced. Alright, enough. Let's break the door down. Corinth Glasgow Girls is back in Glasgow and it has the very prestigious accolade of, of starting the Culture 2014 celebrations. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean to you? It's great. It's, I'm really, really proud, really honoured. Um, I'm, I think the programme that the 2014 organisation have, have put together with using a lot of the grassroots talent and artists that we've got in the country is just brilliant. I'm really looking forward to it. It doesn't feel like it's been made by a faceless board of people that have just imposed lots of big artsy things in the city. It feels like it's come from people that make great work in Glasgow. So to be kicking that off is, is a lovely honour. Yeah. It's been in London since we saw it here last and it went down very well both popularly and critically. Mm. Uh, tell us a bit about the response from, from, from both quarters now. It was amazing. It was amazing. I I think there was that fear that uh, it may have been too Glaswegian a story, too Scottish a story. A lot of the humour was very Scottish, a lot of the, the kind of um, the, the, the in-jokes and just the colloquialisms and the way of talking, it was, you know, it was a very Glasgow-centric story. But essentially still the universal message, the, the story of community, the story of people fighting for their friends. That travels that, and uh, has been proven. And I think one of the most joyous moments for me was seeing, um, you know, black, Asian people standing up, some, you know, big women in, in Stratford East going, I'm a Glasgow girl. <laughs> it was just, it was joyous. And it was that, it just really made me feel, ah, we got, we got something right there. Was there anything that you worried about maybe being lost in translation? Um, there was, there was some jokes that we had to remove. Um, there's, a, there's a bit where the girls all get on a little bus and they're, they're going to the Parliament because they've been invited there by Jack McConnell to, to actually to, to be present at Parliament to discuss their issue. And um, we did this very funny thing where we had um, Myra and Patricia sort of crossing over the stage um, being the passing public art, you know, like the pink sheep down the M8 and the big heads and the, the horse. And uh, of course, when you've travelled the M8 a hundred times in your life, <laughs> it's hilarious. Hilarious. You take that to London and people are just like, what's with the pink sheep? <laughs> what are they on about? <laughs> what are they on about? <laughs> I'm Akka and Karen, we've just seen this fantastic uh, high energy run through uh, here at the Citizens Today of, of Glasgow Girls. It's an all singing, all dancing production. It looks as if it takes it out of you. <laughs> it does a bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I came to see the show a couple of years ago and I remember watching it and just being like, how? <laughs> How are you doing that? And just singing, because prop towards the end as well, it's just massive chunks of, like of just huge. letting everything loose, and they're all just like, whoa! And I'm doing it as well, and so it seems to be all right. It yeah. must be quite a strange experience, actually, for you, Karen, being up there on, on stage thinking, you know, given that you were in the audience one night, presumably I thinking, know. this is a good show, Especially I quite fancy being part of that. Because I came with Joe, who is also in the cast. The two of us came to see it with our friend Lauren, and, and now we're... Yeah, it's bizarre, but it's totally just one of those things where you're like, right, I'm just grabbing this experience and, and, and running with it because I've been given the opportunity, so it's cool, yeah. It's Amaka, cool. you've been with the production since it started in, in 2012 here in Glasgow. How has it changed in that time? Um, it's got tighter, it's more slick, and finding where the points of focus should be. And so now it's much more like at that. home with itself. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's funny having seen it, seeing it in Glasgow and then seeing it in London, and it has developed as a piece. Yeah, it's cool. Amaka, the, the play has certain personal resonance for for your own story and your own background. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah. Well, my um, family were refugees within Nigeria. Um, during the Biafra War, which I think was in the 60s, and my dad was actually a child soldier, and he went off to fight, and my family were just moving around within um, Nigeria. And because he's a performer, a singer songwriter, and an actor as well, and he actually has like a one man show that he's done about that. And hearing those stories, and his music is always about his, his music's always telling the story of our family really in some way or another so it just feels like it's in my blood talking about this kind of thing displaced people and what has he what's his response been when he's been to see it oh he loves it 
Hmm. He absolutely loves it. The first time he saw it, I could just see him standing up at the end, like clapping his head off, standing ovation, crying. He absolutely loved it.